The Turkish army may have stopped the bloodshed, but a real peace was far from the site. In 1975, Turkish Cypriots declared a federal government, and only eight years later, they would declare their independence. During my early youth, my father took me to a, to a sailing course together with him in a small boat, only three meters perhaps. We were sailing and suddenly he took a wrong move with the sail and we dropped into the, into the sea together with him, the boat backwards. Um, this was just before 74, 73 probably. Um, he said, let's go from under into the boat, because the boat was backwards. And we went there, he said, can you breathe? He said, yes. So you should know, whenever you are in the sea and something like this happens, this, there's an area where you can still keep on breathing for a while. Turkey's intervention brought peace to the island. Disagreements between the two communities were still there, but it was time to talk. Discuss certain problems, let us get on with our discussion of those problems. The amicable relationship between acting Greek Cypriot leader Glavkos Klerides and Turkish Cypriot leader Rauf Denktaş enabled them to reach a mutual understanding. However, the positive momentum subsided in the following weeks. My position as to the solution of the problem of Cyprus is that it has to be based on the application of the Charter and the resolutions of the United Nations. The deposed President Makarios was preparing to come back. Makarios's return in December 1974 cast a shadow over the atmosphere of dialogue on the island. I have read Makarios' uh, speech at the General Assembly of the United Nations and my view is that he has once again slammed the door to a negotiated settlement very irresponsibly and probably not knowing the realities of Cyprus the position into which because of his 11 years policy of enosis and of belittling the Turkish factor in Cyprus, of uh, denying Turkish Cypriot rights, uh, the position he has pushed his own community. He has once again referred to the Turkish Cypriot as a small minority in the island. We must not exclude examining every possible solution of the Cyprus problem. Just as I do not accept Mr. Denktaş to make a condition that we only discuss federation, so I cannot uh, uh, ask Mr. Denktaş to say he will not discuss federation. I think we must go into the solution of the Cyprus problem without any preconceived ideas and examine every possible solution. After Turkey's intervention in 1974, the southern part of the island received international support to develop its economy. The north was largely cut off. Turkish Cypriots relied on Turkey for even basic needs. Turkish Cypriots were also displaced as a result of 1974. Many of them moved to the north and they needed to find shelter, housing, as well as an infrastructure. Uh, they also needed employment, and all of these were basically provided by motherland Turkey rather than the international community. The United Nations played a nominal role. They distributed a number of uh, uh, foodstuffs and other things to both communities, but of course this was not 
sufficient to sustain a, a government. And, and so the Turkish Cypriots were basically on their own, virtually embargoed since 1974. And to a large extent, that situation persists. Turkish Cypriots were determined to reach a federal solution. They were already managing their own affairs. And on February 13, 1975, the Turkish Federated State of Cyprus was established with Rauf Dengtaş as president. In August the same year, the two sides agreed on a political framework for a population exchange following UN-sponsored talks in Vienna. Thousands left their homes on both sides to start a new life in their separate regions. Of course, this was very traumatic, not for, for me, but for all uh, Cyprus uh, population, both Greek and Turkish population. It was a period of war, of losing beloved uh, persons, of losing their houses, both of them. And, uh, the West for me, it was the, the new border and the exchange of population. I grew up uh, in North Cyprus, in Nicosia, but in the house of a Greek uh, Cypriot, because we left our house in South and uh, we were settled in a Greek Cypriot uh, house. Uh, and I grew up uh, on a bed of another person, uh, with the uh, furniture of another family, uh, with the pictures and everything. And we left all the same things in South. In 1977, another major step was taken towards reconciliation. Makarios and Denktaş signed a high-level agreement to establish an independent, non-aligned, bicommunal federal republic. The deal, in a way, was an admission by the Greek side that they were not the sole owners of the island. It provided a framework of principles which would become the core of future negotiations. It was to be the last agreement Makarios would ever sign with Turkish Cypriots. From the 20th of July, until 1977, it was still Makarios that was the leader of the Greek Cypriots. He died in 1977. And during that period, Denktash managed, because of, the, because of the trauma, if you like, because of the shock that the Greek Cypriots suffered, and the, the message that they cannot get their objective of union with Greece realized, they managed to understand that they had to agree on certain terms with Turkish Cypriots. That made it possible to reach the Population Exchange Agreement of 1975 and the Bizonality Agreement in 1977, which was realized with Makarios. A second high-level agreement would be reached with the new Greek Cypriot leader, Sipiros Kipriano, in 1979. The talks in the following years focused on the political infrastructure of the new Federal Republic, but the efforts were inconclusive. When Makarios died, we had Spiros Kipriano, the Greek Cypriot leader, who was a fanatic supporter of Enosis. So with his election as president of the Greek Cypriots, the Greek Cypriot policy changed from 1977 onwards. And he tried this time to work with the non-aligned movement in alliance with the Soviet Union to build pressure against Turkey and to unite the island with Greece. And in 1983, he managed in, Del in Delhi, in, in, in India, to secure a decision from the non-aligned movement that Turkey's army should pull out of Cyprus, that uh, everybody should return to their homes. And I mean, he was sim they were simply asking for the return to pre-1974 conditions on the island. That is the point when Dengtaş said, was saying enough is enough. Dengtaş said, now, this is not heading in, in, in, in the direction of uh, a 
equality-based agreement on the island. These people are simply trying to gain time to impose their will on us. That is the point when Engtash uh, suggested or not put forward we are going to go for a two-state solution from now on. That is the turning point. What are the new realities? Well, the new realities are that uh, with Makarios, the world deceived itself that there was a continuity of presidency at least because he was the first president elected. Now that he is gone, that continuity fiction is dead and buried with him. Totally futile to have any meeting or talks on the Cyprus problem with Mr. Dengtaj because, first of all, uh, he does not represent the vast majority of the Turkish Cypriots. Uh, he is himself committed to partition and solution. UN sponsored talks continued in 1980 to no avail. Frustrated by never ending negotiations, Turkish Cypriots took a bold move. On November 15, 1983, they declared their independence. Kuzey Kıbrıs Türk Cumhuriyeti'nin bağımsız bir devlet olarak kurulduğunu dünya ve tarih önünde ilan ediyoruz. I remember when I was at uh, the primary school uh, uh, in 1983 we were brought in front of the parliament, uh, which is located in Nicosia, uh, we had no idea what was going to, to happen. And it was uh, the date of the Declaration of Independence of TRNC, which was an incredible uh, psychological and uh, emotional atmosphere, uh, basically. I'm glad that I was part of it, even as a child, uh, because uh, I believe that Turkish Cypriots uh, do have the same right with the Greek Cypriots uh, of having uh, a state and ruling themselves and uh, having their voice to be heard. This is an equal right of the Turkish Cypriots equal to the Greek Cypriots. But an independent Turkish state on the island was rejected by both Greeks and the United Nations. Well, I was hoping that they could do something. I would have preferred it's not good for me to say it, but uh, I would have preferred that uh, the, the two sides discuss by themselves. The, because the United Nations were influenced by the Americans, they were influenced by the Brits, by the Soviets at the time, by the Russians today. And uh, what they cared is, was to, for them to find a solution that would cover their term in office. And what would happen afterwards, oh, they would not care. What we care about, I mean, the, the Greece, Turkey, uh, and the two communities, is to find a permanent solution that would allow the two countries to live without paying so much money for uh, armaments, which destroys the people of both countries. In the backdrop of diplomatic troubles, Cyprus was still reeling from decades-long fighting. In addition to mass death, injury and displacement, hundreds of people from both sides were unaccounted for. In 1981, the Committee on Missing Persons in Cyprus was established. The mission of the committee is to reach the remains of the missing persons and hand them to their loved ones, irrespective of nationality and religion. The committee was set up in 1981 and it took the leaders many years to ascertain the missing persons list. The missing persons list was established in 1997 and the committee assumed the role of a bicommunal institution in the year 2006. So since 2006, the investigation teams, excavation teams and our experts at the laboratory work together. The investigation has a pool, a common pool, 
where if we research independently, we put all the information in that pool and we share it and we take it from there. Searching for missing persons was one of the few areas where the two communities worked together. Our task is to find the remains, we gather information, we look for remains where the information points, and hopefully we retrieve remains and return them to families for their religious duties, the, rather than the uncertainty of what happened to their loved one. If we can give them the remains and they can have a grave near their house where they can visit and they can have their religious rituals, uh, this is a big relief to the families. We, our task is uh, totally, exclusively humanitarian. The work that is being done, it's a work with a high rate of success when we compare with other countries. But we need to do more because we have still many families waiting for the remains of the, their relatives with a lot of pain. And I could speak with these families and I know very well what is the pain that they are suffering. And we need to uh, join uh, will to go further and to go quicker in order to respond to these people. The, the process starts with the investigators. They first go to a site with the witness and they ascertain the limits of the excavation. And then that is passed on to the excavation team. Uh, before the excavation starts, uh, both sites jointly or separately um, give the, the details to the members and we vote. And then once we say yes, we have a list of excavations, which to start first, and then they go and start excavations. Twenty-five people were given a list of remains. They were given a list of remains. They were given a list of remains. They were given a list of remains. They were given a list of remains. They were given a list of remains. They were given a list of remains. They were Hayatta olan amcam, halam falan hep birlikte işte aile büyükleriyle birlikte gittik. Orada bize işte anlattılar nasıl e, toplu mezerden çıkarıldığını. E, bu arada babamla iki arkadaşı e, çok şanslı bir şekilde tam vücut olarak çıktılar. Bir kayanın altında kalmışlardı. Orada sordular bize görmek ister misiniz? Hayatta bir şans verilir. Ya göreceksin ya hiç görmeyeceksin. Ki ben babamı kaybettiğimde iki aylıktım ve hiç hatırlamıyordum babamı. Ve orada hepimiz e, görmek istedik zaten. Küçük bir odaya girdik. Orada beyaz bir örtü üzerinde en küçücük kemiklerine kadar, yani bu parmakların en küçük şeyine kadar. Hatta orada bir tanesini istedim ben dedim. Baba bir tane verin dedim. Cüzdanıma koyayım babamdan falan. Yok dediler. Ya olmaz yani bu aykırıdı dediler. But in other areas, Turkish and Greek Cypriots had little cooperation. On and off peace talks were not bearing any fruit. We also had, uh, had this historical movement to find a solution on the Cyprus issues. We, we had also mistakes made by the United Nations. Uh, one example I remember when I was in uh, New York, uh, Perez de Guayar, the Secretary General, he wanted to convene the uh, meeting of the five. I mean, uh, uh, that was uh, Greece, Turkey, UK, and the two communities at the moment uh, uh, that it was not ripe. And they were lying. They were not telling us the truth. They were telling us, both to, to, the, to, to Turkey and to Greece, that uh, the differences are very small. And if we have a meeting of the five, uh, we might reach uh, conclusions. Uh, my point of view was that uh, the Secretary General of the United Nations wanted uh, 
to show something, that something is moving, something uh, which would be to also uh, to his personal interest and, and prestige. So what did I do? I uh, decided to contact my Turkish colleague in New York and to discuss the points to see whether we were close or not. And we bet we had a nice lunch with our notes and we found out that uh, we were not close at all. And that if we had a meeting of the five, it would be a disaster which might create a crisis afterwards. So we both uh, informed our capitals that uh, Boschver, forget it, don't do anything. And uh, this, this, this way we, we saved uh, the situation from becoming worse. Relations between Turkey and Greece were not always smooth sailing. The two guarantors of peace in Cyprus faced off in 1987 over Greece's oil drilling activities in the Aegean Sea. Ankara sent a survey ship to the area with an escort of Turkish warships. The crisis quickly escalated with both sides threatening military action. After the crisis of uh, 87, uh, I was there, I was there and uh, we almost went to, to war, that was the most uh, dangerous moment because we were waiting, I remember that the Turkish fleet was in the Black Sea uh, making an exercise and the generals had taken over in Ankara because Ozal was in Houston to having his uh, open heart operation. And Athens was asking me to tell them when the fleet would pass from the Bosporus, because my house was, in, my residence was on the Bosporus. So when the fleet started coming down from the Bosporus, I told Athens, they're coming. And at that time, Ozal reached London. He told the generals to shut up, and uh, the whole crisis was, uh, was diffused. And we went through a period of very good relations. The 1990s brought more isolation. In the wake of the Cold War, the UN Security Council shifted its approach to the Cyprus issue from its traditional mediation role to a more assertive one. In 1992, the UN Secretary General Boutros Ghali introduced a set of ideas for an overall framework agreement. Turkish and Greek Cypriot leaders gathered in New York for talks on the constitutional aspects of the Federation, security and guarantee, territorial adjustments, displaced persons, economic development and safeguards, and transitional agreements. The dialogue unearthed deep-seated mistrust between the two parties once again, culminating in another failure. Rauf Denktaş blamed the UN Secretary General for overstepping his mission and trying to impose an unfair settlement. For the first time in the history of Cyprus talks, a UN Secretary General sided with one party and accused the Turkish leader of being intractable. Başından beri Kıbrıs'ta bir federasyon olacağına inanmayanlardanım. Çünkü 74'te 74 Barış Hareketi ile iki ayrı bölge olduk. Bu iki ayrı bölgenin e, artık bir arada yaşamasının mümkün olmadığına başından beri inanan bir kişiyim. Çünkü o günleri de yaşadım. Yani savaş günlerini de yaşadım. Savaşın gerçek yüzünü de gördüm. Rumların galleşliğini de gördüm. Vahşiliğini de gördüm. Dolayısıyla İki halkın bir arada olamayacağına başından beri inanan kişiyim ben. Ama gün geldi Cumhurbaşkanı olduk. E, müzakerelerde gündem federasyon, Türkiye'nin gündeminde federasyon, şeyin e, Birleşmiş Birlik Milletler'in gündeminde federasyon. Federasyon görüşürken de ben hep şunu kaydettim. Bu Rumların uzlaşmazlığı bu masada görülecek. Rumların uzlaşmazlığını eğer dünyaya gösterebilirsek, Dünya bize bakışını, bakış açısını değiştirecek diye bir düşünce içerisinde oldum hep. Ha, gün geldi federasyonu görüştüm. Çünkü gündem oydu. Masada e, Türkiye'nin de, bizim de, Rumların da politikası oydu. Birleşmiş Milletler'in de politikası oydu. Meanwhile, a strict economic embargo was placing more pressure on Turkish Cypriots. In 1994, the European Union deemed the food certificates issued by Northern Cyprus unacceptable. Exports and flights from Northern Cyprus could only take place through Turkey. Direct flights were banned internationally. 
But the biggest blow to Turkish Cypriots was yet to come. In 1998, European Union listed the Greek Cypriot government as potential member of the bloc. Rumlar Avrupa Birliği'ne müracaat ettiği zaman 1990 yılında ben başbakandım. Ve Türkiye Cumhuriyeti Dışişleri Bakanı ile e, istişare ettik ve Ankara'ya davet edildim. E, Ankara'da ilk defa devlet töreniyle uçak alanında başbakan tarafından karşılanmıştım. Ve yaptığımız toplantıda Avrupa Birliği'ne itiraz etme karar aldık ve itiraz ettik. Avrupa Birliği'nden bize gelen cevap bu bir müracaattır, ileri götürmeyecektir dedi ama tabii biliyorsunuz ileriye götürüldü. That move would complicate any future attempts for a United Cyprus. The fall of the Soviet Union and the change of the political landscape across Europe would also affect the situation in Cyprus. Brussels intention to include Cyprus as a whole in the enlarging European Union would change the dynamics. In early 2000s, Cyprus would see its greatest diplomatic struggle. <laughs>